This is a Porsche Carrera GT, and I will admit it's not the most exciting car to look at. Line it up next to Ferraris, Coenseggs, Lamborghinis and Paganis, and they will steal all of the attention. The looks might not be shouty, however the engine, a 5.7 litre V10, will certainly make up for that. All 600 precision engineered German horsepowers are eager to escape out of the back wheels at the slightest press of the throttle. 0 to 60 takes 3.5 seconds, 0 to 100 takes 7 and it will go on to a top speed of 205 miles an hour. Not bad, considering there isn't even a turbo or two to help it along, just brute power. And then there's the noise. The V10 howls away like an old race car engine. It's fantastic, how can you not want that in your life? And more cars should definitely sound like this. The handling is oppressive as well. The brakes will stop you in a hurry, should you need them to, and there's plenty of grip. It turns into corners nicely, and as long as you're careful with the throttle, you won't be understeering or oversteer when you put the power down. This car is huge amounts of fun to drive, right up to the point at which it all goes horribly wrong. If you overstep the line by even a millimetre, physics will have you and you will be facing backwards, or in a wall, or whatever piece of scenery happens to be near you at the time. It's literally like driving on a knife edge. Big supercars like this are always tricky to drive, but there is such a fine line with this one. But one moment everything will be going amazingly well, and then the next you'll be scattered in bits in the gravel trap. If anything, I say driving this is closer to driving a V8 supercar than anything else, you have to be 100% focused on what's going on around you. And while I wouldn't want to drive a car like this every day, there's that terrifying excitement that you get when you drive something as scary as this that means when you drive it, you will certainly remember it. If you know what you're doing, this car is incredible. The grip, the speed and the noise of the speed are amazing. And it will even give most modern supercars a run for their money. If you don't know what you're doing though, you will probably spend a lot of your time in a cloud of tyre smoke facing the wrong way. And now it is time to hand the Carrera over to the stick and see what lap time he can get out of it. Now, expectation wise, this is a relatively high S-Class car. I wouldn't expect it to be sort of up with the Celine, but it should put in a, a relatively quick time. It'll be interesting to see where it compares to like the 458 and McLaren. Up to the first corner, he gets turned in nicely. There's actually a bit of oversteer there on the exit. He wants him to escape towards the grass, but he keeps it under control. Up to Chicago now, and he's looking like he's understeering a little bit more than I was expecting it to, but of course he keeps it all under control. Now he can unleash all 600 horsepowers and it's a very, very fast car in a straight line. It's surprisingly fast. It catches you out just how quick it is. A heavy on the brakes into the hammerhead. Get around the first part nicely. There's some more understeer through here, actually. Much more than I was expecting to see from this. And then there's plenty of oversteer on the exit. Car barely under control there. It's <coughs> Stig is having a, <laughs> a tough time with this one. Now, coming up to the follow-through. Of course, you're going to have to brake in this car. It's phenomenally fast accelerating. And then we're coming through the tyres. So you can see, yeah, that's very, very, very quick through there. Now, we're up to the second to last corner now. This is very tricky because the car is going about 150 before you have to put the brakes on. It's turned in and it's going sideways again. But he keeps it just about on the tarmac and around the last corner. This is a very quick lap time. And there we go, across the line. And the Carrera GT did a lap time of 114.2, which really surprised me, actually. I mean, I know this car is quick, but even I wasn't expecting it to be quite that fast. It's only just behind an Aventador. It... Got, what was it, nearly a second faster than a McLaren and a Ferrari 458. It's phenomenally quick. It's huge amounts of fun to drive, but it is very, very scary. It's not the cheapest car, 400,000 credits, but I'd say it's definitely, definitely worth it. Now, next week I am going away for like a week, so if you want a car that you want me to review, I'm going to do it later today. So be quick with the comments, otherwise I'm going to use a car that Stevie told me or suggested I should use quite a while ago. But um, yeah, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.